Imagine being able to write complex logic in just a few lines of code. That's the power of map, filter and reduce, the most powerful array methods in JavaScript. I like to think of them as a for each loop on steroids, because they are very similar to for each, but with one big difference. They return a new array. Take map for example. The map method returns a new array that does not modify the original array. Instead, it creates a new array where each item has been transformed by the function you pass in. So how does it work? To understand how map works, let's look at this example. Here we have a list of prices that contain all our product's prices. Now you want to apply a 50% discount to all of these products. So we need to change each price. One way to do that is to use a for each loop for the prices. We use the three parameters and assign a new price at the current index position by 0.5, which is a 50% discount. So this works fine. But the problem is here we change the original array. And usually we don't want to do this. We don't want to overwrite our data. An alternative is to create a new array, discount prices, and then push the new prices into this array. And this also works fine. But the problem is we have to manually manage the new array and push the new value into it every time. And this is not really efficient. Using map, you can do the same thing more efficiently with less code. This will make things a lot easier. The syntax is very much the same. We can simply replace the for each method with map. It also receives a callback function with three parameters. The current value, the index and the array, just like for each. But we usually only need the first parameter, which represents the current value. Inside the function, we don't want to push anything. Instead, we have to return the value. Remember, the map method creates a new array based on the values we return here. For example, the discount price. Then we can assign the result of this map method to the discount prices variable. And on the console, we can see the new prices, but the original array stays the same. So the map method doesn't modify the array, which is great, because we really don't want to mutate our data. Instead, we create a new array that contains the discounted prices using the map method. Let's break down what happened here. The map method iterates over an array, and it calls a callback function on each element in the prices array, very similar to for each. But the difference is, map creates a new array that contains all the values we returned inside the function. In our case, price times 0.5. But in fact, you can return whatever you want. For example, price plus one will increase each price by one. You can even return completely unrelated values, like a random string. Then this string appears in the array. So map doesn't care what you return here. It simply replaces the current element with a return value. Eventually, you will have a new array of the same size as the original array. The content of the array depends on whatever you return. If you don't return a value, then the new array will contain lots of undefined. By the way, when our callback function only contains a return statement, then we can actually write the same thing in only one line of code. Just remove the curly braces and the return keyword. The result of this expression will be returned automatically, so we don't have to write the return keyword. We also don't need these parentheses if we only have one parameter. This notation is called the one line arrow function. It allows us to say the same thing with less code a lot faster. So as you can see, you can use map whenever you want to transform data from one array into another. And all of this with only one line of code, which is way more efficient than for each. Let's look at some other examples for map, because usually we have more complex arrays. Imagine you have an array that contains all the products of your online shop. Each product is represented by an object. It has a name, a price, color, and so on. Now we want to do the same thing we just did and apply a 50% discount for each price. But here the return statement looks a little different because the new array should contain the same objects where the other properties are the same. We just want to override the price. Everything else should be copied. So let's return an object and use the spread operator to copy all properties from the original product object. Then we override the price property with a discounted price. This way we keep the same structure. We copy the entire object and only change the price. This is an example how you can use map for an object array. But we can also use map to simplify a list. You can get this by only returning the product.name. This will transform a list of objects into a list of strings. In other example, you could do the exact opposite and even add more properties to the objects. For example, different price categories or even a product description. We are still copying all the other properties using the spread operator, but we're also adding new properties to every object in the array. So you have the complete freedom to transform your data however you want. But sometimes you don't want to transform your data, but instead filter it. For example, to create a filter in your online shop or create a search input on your website. For this, we use the filter method. Filter is by far my favorite array method because it's just so clever and I use it everywhere. This method allows you to write very common filtering algorithms with just a few lines of code. Here's how it works. The filter method helps you filter out items from an array based on a condition. 
Using filter, we can iterate over an array and return a new array similar to the map method. But here's a huge difference. Filter returns a new array that only contains the items that pass the condition we return. If it returns true, then the current element will be included in the array. If it returns false, then the element is skipped. So the resulting array is likely going to be smaller than the original array. To demonstrate the filter method, let's go back to the products array. Imagine you only want to show the products that cost less than $200. For this we create a new variable, affordable products, because we are broke. And then we call the filter method on the products array. It also takes a callback function. Here we could pass three parameters again, value, index and array, but we only really care about the value which is the current element. So we can use the one line arrow function. Again, this function will be called for every product in the array. It also needs to return something, but this time we return a condition. We want to check if the price is less than $200. So we return this comparison. Of course, using this notation, we don't need the return keyword as I explained earlier. In the console, we can see that the new array contains only the products that cost less than $200. Of course, the original array stays the same. Let's break down what happened here. The filter method goes through each product in the array. It checks if the price of the current product is less than $200. If the condition is true, we keep this product in the new array. If the condition is false, the product is not included in the new array. As a result, we get an array with only the affordable products where the price is less than 200. Let's look at some other examples for the filter method. Obviously, the condition we use here can be very different. For instance, we can return all the products that have the color white. Then only the white products will be in the new array. Another example would be to return the products that include a certain string in their name. For example, phone. Then we only get the smartphone and headphone. This can be very useful if you want to add a search filter to your website. You can also combine different conditions. With filter, you can be as specific as you like. For example, if you only want the white products that are also under $100. Just combine the conditions with the AND operator. As you can see, the filter method is very powerful. It's probably my favorite way to work with arrays, because it's so convenient and helps to keep my code clean. Now let's talk about the most confusing array method, reduce. The reduce method might seem a little tricky at first, but it's actually quite simple. Reduce basically turns a list of values into one single value. This could be anything, a sum, a text, or even a new object or array. Usually it is a number or a string. So unlike filter and map, the reduce method does not return an array, unless we specifically say so. Let's look at some examples. If you have an array with numbers, you can easily calculate the sum of all the numbers in the array. A classic example is calculating the total price of the items in a shopping cart. To keep things simple, let's use a numbers array that contains the prices of all products. To get the total price, we use the reduce method on the prices array. This will reduce all of these numbers into a single value. We pass a callback function again, but this time it requires two parameters, the accumulator and the current value. In this case, it makes sense to call them total and current price. Now, just like map and filter, the reduce method will iterate over the array and call this function for each element. Inside the function, we want to return a value. The return statement reassigns the accumulator variable every time. So whatever is returned here is going to be our total for the next iteration. For example, return total plus current price. This way, on each iteration, we add the current price to the total. In other words, the return statement updates the total every time. But one thing is still missing. When we use the reduce method, we should normally initialize the accumulator. We do this in the second parameter of the reduce method. So this is the starting value for the total variable, and we set this to zero. If we print the total price, we can see the sum of all of these values in the console. So let's break down what happened here. We start with a total of zero. On the first iteration, we add the price to the total, zero plus four. So in the second iteration, the total is going to be four. Here, we return four plus eight. In the third iteration, it's 12 plus 15, and so on. After each return statement, the total variable increases by the current price. By the end of the loop, reduce returns the total sum of all the prices. I hope this makes sense. Now let's briefly talk about the second parameter, zero. If we don't specify a starting value for the accumulator, then the reduce method will take the first element of the array as its initial value. So initially, the total will be set to four. Then it starts from the second element. So in this case, it still works correctly even without the initial value. But I would not recommend to do this, because if for some reason the array is empty, then we will get an error. Or if we use the products array from the previous example, then it won't work, since the initial value would be an object. So I recommend to always set the initial value to make sure everything works correctly. Let's look at some other use cases. 
In this example, we use the reduce method to return a number. But you can do the same thing with other data types too, like strings or even objects. For example, if you have an array with words and you want to combine them in one single string, then you can do this the same way. You have the accumulator variable plus the current value. Of course, here the initial value would be an empty string and not zero. So the initial value should always be based on whatever you want to return at the end. And in the console, we can see how the strings are combined at the end. In a more complex example, we can use the reduce method to create an object. Here, we count how many times certain words appear in the array and then return the result as an object. You don't have to understand this right away. It is only meant to show you what is possible with reduce. The reduce method turns a list of values into one value. What kind of value you want to return is completely up to you. These three methods, map, filter, and reduce, can be used in lots of different ways. It really depends on your creativity what you want to do with them. And you can even combine them together. Here's a crazy example. Let's say I have added a new property to the array called isInShoppingCart. This is a boolean which is set to true when the user has added the product to their shopping cart. Now the question is, how can I calculate the total price of all the products in the cart and also apply a discount? The answer, by combining the three methods. First, we use filter to find the products inside the shopping cart. So of all the products we have, we only want to have those where the boolean is true. Then we use map to apply the discount. And finally, the reduce method calculates the total price. I hope you now have a clear understanding of how map, filter and reduce work. There are even more array methods similar to these, which we will cover in another video. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like and watch this video to learn more about web development. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. And I will see you in the next video.